Wow, I'm so excited. Okay, bye kids. Everybody say bye kids. Oh, that's nice. We're a family church. You know, so it's very exciting as, as we get the word. You know, we've got a very good bunch of uh, Sunday school and children's church teachers. They're working very hard to ensure every child grows up in the word of the Lord. Isn't that great? Amen? Amen. If ever you have a heart to help for, for children's ministry, they didn't ask me to do this, but I'm just doing it because really, if you have a heart for the children's ministry, even if you have no professional training, guess what? They, you can just avail yourself and they're more than willing to train you and you know, you can be a part of this very exciting and, and uh, exuberant ministry, okay? So just let us know if ever you're interested in that. So last week was Missions Weekend. How many of y'all were here last weekend, last Saturday or last Sunday? Can I see your hands? Higher, 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 higher. Okay, I still see some hands that were down, which means some of y'all, maybe y'all were traveling or you just couldn't make it. It's okay because guess what? We're still having Missions Emphasis Week this week. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God the glory. Because missions happens every day of our lives. Tell your neighbor, every day. Okay, let's try it again with more excitement. Missions happens every day in your life. Tell your neighbor, every day. Every day. Because you know what? As long as God loves you and me every day, missions has to happen every day. Correct or not? Yes. And I, I'm excited. I saw some of the names up there. I see some, some young people as well. I think Jason Wu. I think Shen Yen. I don't know who else. It was very fast. I couldn't catch all the names. But I'm excited because really, missions is not for the retired. Missions is not for the pastors. Missions trips are really meant for every one of us to be a part of. Still not convinced? We'll, we'll talk a little bit more in a while's time. But firstly, I would like to give an update. Can we have the slide on missions giving, please? Yeah, we just want to update on, you know, uh, many of y'all took part in our missions giving, right? Because we have about 13 nations, including Malaysia, that Glad Tidings is actively involved in. And all these activities, that church planting, supporting pastors, all need what? What is this called? What is this called? Oh, I'm so scared to use the word. The word is okay. It's okay to use that word in the house of the Lord. What's it called? Money! I mean, is it an unholy word, money? No. So, does missions need money? Yes. We are a very practical church. Do you need money? Who doesn't need money? All hands down. My hand also must come down. <laughs> Everybody needs money. And what more in the missions field when they need to build churches, plant churches, send, send uh, pastors for training, Bible school students, all needs money. So all your giving really is going to be multiplied into all, this, all these different nations and new works to come. Let's have a look at it. That's right, love in action because love has got to be a verb. A verb is always an action. Amen. Let's have the, the, the slide. This was our budgeted amount for the English church. We were targeting to raise about 2.9 million. And Chinese church on their side, they were targeting to raise about... 415,000. There's also separate figures for the Bahasa Indonesia Church and the Tamil Church. We don't have it at the moment yet. You know, so, but we have at least, oh, at least 3.4 3 million that we needed to raise. Everybody say with me, wow, wow. Because really, when you want to do the, yes, wow, I like his wow. It's so cute, this wow. So much money, huh? Yeah. Are you all excited and interested to know how, how much was pledged so far? Okay, let's have the slides. Okay, can you click? Okay, so now it look, look at the, this on, on, on your right-hand side, it's the pledged amount. That means after calculating all the pledges with all totals from all the different language churches, we have a total of 1.998964. Come on, let's give God the glory because it's 2 million. We've got almost 2 million dollars there. But have we met the target yet? Have we met the target yet, church? Come on, have we met the target yet? No. But can, the, can we meet the target as a church? Come on, when God gives us a dream, a vision, a plan, who's in charge of the monies of the world? Who's in charge of the monies of the world? You're not convinced. Who's in charge of the monies of the world? God. You need to be convinced that God is in charge of all the monies of the world. And you know what? When He wants to bless the mission field, He chooses to use 
ordinary people like you and I. Wouldn't it be amazing if God blesses you with like, you know, half a million and says, okay, here's half a million and you know what? 100,000 for you, 400,000 for the kingdom. Wow, so much of God. But in the first place, we never had 100,000 or so anyway, right? But isn't it amazing if God can use your hands to be a channel? Do you believe that that can happen for you all this year? Yeah, I believe that that can happen for myself as well. I'm also making a pledge and saying, God, oh God, you got to help me, you know? I don't know how it's going to be. I know many of us are concerned, worried about what lies ahead. Don't worry, when you put your trust in the Lord, He knows what lies ahead, you know? So we're just going to continue on, you know, with, with, uh, with today's uh, short sermon sharing, you know, just straight from my heart, what God has placed in my heart and, you know, begin to just ask the Lord, what is it that you have in store for us? Um, I believe some of them were not here last weekend. If you weren't here last weekend and you say, hey, I, I, I want to be a part of this, I just want to receive the materials, you know, the, the, the mission pledge cards and the booklet. You know, if that's you, we just wanna, don't want to miss you out. Just put up your hands. I'll just uh, very quickly going to just hand over all the materials to you. Let's uh, lift, it, lift it higher so that ushers can see you. I see one. Any more? Anyone else? Don't be shy. Just, just collect the booklet. Anyone else? Okay, I see some more hands. That's right. Keep your hand up until you receive the booklet, okay? Okay. Booklet or card? Maybe you got a booklet but you didn't get the card. All right. So we'll just carry on. Can we have the slides first? You know, when I was preparing today, I was like, wow, they've had two weekends of missions. What else is there to share, Lord, about missions? Are you wondering, like, oh dear, another missions topic? And so that's why I entitled this, Why Do Missions? Because I also was wondering, why? Why do we keep talking and talking and talking about missions? And, you know, I, I actually sent WhatsApp messages to different individuals, you know, and asking them a basic question. You have, especially for those who have gone on more than one mission trip, are there people here you have been on at least two mission trips and above, or foreign ones, or foreign or local ones? You've been for two and above, two, three, four, five, more than one. Can I see your hands? Yeah? Yeah, quite a number of you have been for more than two. So, sorry, I didn't text all of you all, okay? I happened to just text a few of you all and ask you all this question. I asked the question is, what keeps you going? Why do you keep, keep going back? Because some of them keep going back to the same country. Huh? Sister Julie, you've been going back to India for how many years? Huh? Oh, Cambodia, sorry, Cambodia, that's right. How many years has it been? 15 years. You shared a testimony last week. 15 years. Always Cambodia. Keep going back. Hallelujah. You don't get bored. You know, that's the exciting part of our missions because you know what? If I were to go back to the same holiday destination year after year after year, I would get bored. Come on. How many of y'all, you keep going back to the same holiday destination every year? Chances are no. But what is it about missions that keeps us going back year after year after year? Pastor Linda keeps going back how many years already? 20 at least. At least 20 years and counting, right? And counting, right? It's amazing. So why we do missions? Is mission still relevant today? Is mission still relevant in my life, you might ask? Is it for everybody? So these are the few of the, 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 the responses I got from those who keep going. The first one is on Frida Liu. She works in BHM. She says, I keep going back. She always goes to Sri Lanka with me to see development, to see God's grace, and to be humbled, to be humbled in His presence. Michelle Fu, one of our leaders here, because it's the heartbeat of God, and each time I'm so blessed by my time there. Missions is the heartbeat of God. Teresa Chai, no, she's now the country coordinator. This is not Pastor Teresa Chai from last week. This is our own um, glad tidings version of Teresa Chai, our country coordinator for Cambodia. To be a channel of God's blessings and to see lives being changed. Jeannie Wong, who has also come with me many times to Sri Lanka, it never fails to bring me back to the realization we are still living in times where God's power can be witnessed with my own eyes. Because when she went on trips, she began to see miracles happening right in front, not on TV or some, some overseas speaker, but right in front as she herself just laid her hand on. It's like, wow. So she, she is always very excited. 
Torvina Chiu, she is the country coordinator for Thailand. For her, it's an answer to God's call to share the gospel. And every time she goes there, she says, people are so hungry for spiritual food and for training. She goes to Vietnam. Vietnam is a, it was a closed country, communist regime. You can't have big rallies. You can't do much. But what you can do is equip the pastors, equip the leaders who will then take the gospel all the way inside. You and I cannot go inside. Then they tell me, Pastor Su, you cannot go. Because they look at you one shot, obviously you are a foreigner. I say, ah yeah, I pain myself lah, you know. You know, but you know, we all have different giftings and talents, different natural abilities. So I know I cannot go to those countries because I will stick out like a sore thumb. But some of y'all, y'all can make it. I see the majority of y'all here can make it. Nah? Except for the, the ones who look like me, nah, the, my international brothers and sisters and some other Indians around, right? We can are suited for another kind of country, not the communist kind yet. Not yet. Hallelujah. We have Sarah Chong, who, was, who went to Sri Lanka and she didn't just go, she also led the team and, and she was you know, leading it for the first time as well. And her comment was, each trip uncovers more and more of God's heart. And each step of obedience into missions draws us closer and closer to His. means as we go, you get closer and closer to the heart of God. I think that's very beautiful. We do get closer to the heart of God. Sister Siumoy, she said missions was never her cup of tea. Because, you know, she's like, oh my goodness, all the, all the you know, it's not being comfortable and everything. But she said, I still go because the needs are great. It's as simple as that. The needs are great. Kasturi Balan, our Tamil church um, staff, basically, she just goes because she's just got a passion and a love for the people. Very simple reason. Nothing, nothing uh, bombastic. For Lam Kawai, she's currently, you know, um, she actually left her job and in training to become a really a full-time missionary in the land of Japan. For her, she said, because many people have never heard the gospel. It's urgent work, but workers are few. Sister Merlin, seeing the move of God outside my comfort zone, to see life set free from bondages, new friendships. For Brother Jeremy Tan, he fulfills the three goals of mission, pray, give and go. And it's one of his yearly personal goals. He purposes in his heart every year, missions is a priority. And he makes it happen no matter how busy he is. Brother Srida, you know, he was one of the early, early pioneers when we first began the whole missions in, in Glad Tidings. I was, my first few, first and my second missions trip was actually with Brother Srida. And my goodness, he put me on the spot many times. I think I was about maybe 23. Anybody here 23 years old? Okay, one 23 year old. Okay, that means you can preach already. Yeah, because that's what he did to me. You know, we were all there. So I'm just wondering like, okay, I'm here to share my testimony, you know, because, you know, that, that's what I can do. I'm a university student and I can share a testimony. And then he says, okay, Sue, so tomorrow you're on. I said, yeah, okay, I got my testimony ready. No, you're sharing the word. What? What? Then like, the whole night I cannot sleep. You know, like, oh my goodness, Jesus, help me, you know. And, and it was just on the spot. And you know what? I don't know what kind of gospel I shared. I don't know, you know, whether, whether it was a heresy. I don't know whether, you know, people were stumble. But you know what? The heart of God comes up when you don't know what to do. Amen. The desperation of God comes up when you don't know what to do. I don't know what, what the message was even until today, you know. But all I know was people actually responded. It was one of those, like, no lights around, you know, like, they have carbide lamps. And so I just said, oh, Jesus, you know, I just don't look up. No eye contact with people because I'm like, so terrified of people. Just didn't want to have any eye contact. Like, now can have eye contact, like, not so scary. But at that time, I was so scared. But you know what? Hi, yo, Jesus can really use... Use really that little mustard seed faith. And I be, but not to say that after that I became a superwoman. Every time we were asked, every time I'm like, oh God, don't call me again. I almost died a million deaths the last time. But you know what? God is amazing. And He uses every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, from the most experienced and even to the least experienced. And that's the beauty about just stepping out in faith. So to all those 23 and below, and to all those 23 and above, you can do it. Tell your neighbor, you can do it too. You know, we've heard of the word, huh? have you all heard of the, the term unreached people groups? Have you all, how many have heard of the term unreached people groups? Very few, huh? Okay, today we have a short lesson on unreached people groups. Unreached people groups are basically, let's have the definition now. 
there are about 7,000 plus, we don't have the exact figure, 7,000 over unreached people groups in the world. The definition of unreached people groups is either an unreached or a least reached people. Uh, um, among which there's no indigenous com community. That means in that group of people, there is no community of believing Christians. That means just say, you know, there is a particular race or a particular tribe, and in the whole tribe worldwide, there is no uh, community of Christian believers. If, even, they might have maybe one or two, but it's not of adequate numbers. And they may not even have resources like the Bible, resources like Bible study, they don't have, you know, the Bible on the iPad. <laughs> they don't have the Bible on the telephone. They don't have the Bible in, even written. Not even the Gospel of John. You get what I'm saying? They don't have a pastor to even come in and share with them. They don't even have a cell leader. They don't, they don't even have another fellow brother to even tell them about Jesus. There was one, one famous missionary William Carey, yeah, I believe it was William Carey. He was a missionary to India. He said this. He was so, so passionate about the gospel and, and missions work. He said this thing. He said, it is not fair for some people in the world to hear the gospel two, three, four, five times and more when there are so many who have not heard the gospel even once. You all get what I'm saying? We are very privileged. We get to hear about the love of Jesus every week. In fact, we can get to hear it every day. We just need to on our podcast. So efficient, are we all? On podcast and then, whew, through, the, through the, the waves, it just comes to us. So easy. But for some, who is Jesus? They don't know. So that's the unreached people groups. Okay? And now, then you say, okay. So what about the unreached people groups? What can I do? My position is here. I was born in Malaysia. I was born in Kenya. I was born in Zambia. I was born in Zimbabwe. It's got nothing to do with me. All the 7,000, I can't do anything about it. But that's why Glad Tidings, God has placed in Glad Tidings a heart for missions, a heart for the nations. The word nations, right, in Greek, comes from the root word of ethnos. Ethnos, that's where our word ethnicity comes from. It's not so much nation, it's ethnos, the, the different kinds of ethnic groups that are present, okay? And we have a heart for the nations. That's why we, we keep doing this every year. We keep challenging ourselves every year because you know what? 7,000 people groups. 7,000 people groups. So in Glad Tidings, as we mentioned last week, we're involved in about 13 countries. 13 different nations, including Malaysia. So besides Malaysia, there are 12 other nations beyond Malaysia. And every one of these nations, in fact, I just, you know, just, just did a, a, a quick comparison to find out in the 13 nations, including Malaysia, to find out how many people groups we actually have. Are you all curious to know in the 13 nations that Glad Tidings goes to, how many people groups do we have the potential to reach? Any, any guesses? Considering that, you know, 7,000 is the bigger, the, the whole world. Any guesses? Anybody want to guess? All together, all 12, 13 nations. Any guesses? I'm scared to guess. Ah. <laughs> well, don't have to guess. I will, I will show you. It's a bit small, so don't worry about the smaller figures. Can we have the next slide, please? I know it's really small for the ones at the back, but we have to just squeeze it all in. But the figures, actually, it's, it's quite staggering. When you look at, for example, Bangladesh, it has got 372 people groups. And to date, we still have 339 unreached. So not even 100 of the, of the people groups in Bangladesh have been reached. Not even half of the people of Bangladesh have been reached. Isn't that like quite astounding? And when you go down the line, Huh? Sister Julie, Cambodia is there as well. Yeah? But thankfully, you see, that Cambodia has at 12 reached still another 30 more. It's still more than half, you know. It's still more than half. Go down to China. China is doing well. Hallelujah. Oh, no, no, it's not doing it. It's the other way around. It's still not doing well, sorry. It's just less than 100 reached. 
Still 456. And look at India. Oh my goodness. Still 2,000. 2,000, not people. 2,000 people group. Okay, I want to do an exercise here. Let's just really catch what this is all about. Now, in our hall here, Pastor Gwen, do you think we've got 300 people here? We have about 300 people. Can we all just stand up, every one of us? I'm not here to embarrass you, but everyone just stand up, okay? That's right, everyone stand up. Thank you. Imagine, every one of you that's standing up, you represent one whole tribe. You represent one people group. Everyone here. Everyone here represents one people group. And I have the gospel, but I didn't go and share it with your people group. So your people group never, re- not just you, your, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your siblings, grandchildren, whoever. Nobody knows. Your whole tribe, you know. You know I know some of the, the Africans, you all have, you, you have little tribes as well. Besides your own people group, you have your people group tribes. And even for us, you know, the Chinese, you, you've got, you, you've got the, the Cantonese, you've got the Hainanese, you've got the whatever. And the, the Indians also, we all have our different things. And can you imagine, like for me, the entire people group of all the Sinhalese people in the world, they are still actually not reached. Can you imagine? Isn't that shocking? And no one tells you the gospel. Because it's just too inconvenient. Quite shocking, right? Come, let's all sit down. If this, this is 300 over people, you know what? This is all roughly the people groups in one country of Bangladesh. And you're not just people groups. There are probably thousands in every people group. Thousands in every people group in every nation. In total, for Glad Tidings, for the countries that GT is working with, we are actually ex- we have the potential to be exposed to 5,607 unreached people groups in total. No, people groups in total. Out of which, 4,200 are yet to be reached. Do we have a lot of work to do? Do we have a lot of work to do? We've got 4,200 people groups yet to be reached in the 13 nations that we're involved in. That was mind-blowing for me. I, I, is your mind being blown by these facts? It's like, wow! And then, you know, in, in Matthew 24, it just struck me, Matthew 24 talks about there'll be wars and rumours of wars. There'll be, there'll be, you know, all kinds of earthquakes. There'll be all kinds of different things happening. Are those things happening today, church? Is it happening? Have you all heard about wars? Have you heard about rumours of wars? Have you heard about earthquakes? And now Malaysia, what's this, tornadoes coming in? Never before. Things are changing. But you know what? The Bible has always already foretold all these things. All foretold already. So but this just means that we are living in the last days. We are living in the last days. So all the more, it takes you and I to be a part of the end time harvest machinery that God is going to be using. God wants to use every one of us here. And you know, even if you're a student, right? I want to challenge all the students. If you're a student here, wave to me. I don't care how old you are, but you're a student. Wave to me, all students here. I want to challenge you all. My first trip was actually as a student. I was, I was still studying in, in UKM and I wasn't uh, not, not earning money. My mom didn't have money. There was this one missions, having a missions convention and I was really excited because they were talking about having a first missions trip to Indonesia way back in 90... I think it was 95. I can't quite remember. No, no, before that. 93. It was in 93. The first mission trip to, in, to Indonesia. And my heart was saying, oh, you God, I really want to go. But I dare not even mention it to my mom because it's a lot of money, you know. And, and it, she was just a single, single income earner. So I dare not mention it. So I just prayed. I said, Lord, I don't know how. I don't know who to ask. I don't know what to say. But I'll just tell you this is my desire. If you want me to go, you make it happen. Then after service, right, my mom while we were going back home, she said, Sue, I think you should go for this trip. Then I look at her, where are you going to get the money from? She said, never mind, we ask. We ask and see got subsidy or not. I said, okay, okay, we ask for subsidy, you know. Of course, those days, things were a lot cheaper. Mission trips were a lot cheaper. 
but it, the value of money was still hard. And you know, we really we asked for the subsidy. We applied because as students, you can apply. You can you can reach out and ask for 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 help if you really have a passion to do so. Never allow finances to be in your way. But if the Lord speaks to you, say, God, I'm willing. You know, because really God owns the cattle on the, the hills, right? He owns everything in this world. He can move mountains. We sang that song. It is a truth, not just a song. He can move the mountains for you. Cannot get leave for young adults. He can move the mountains. Because I also enjoyed myself in missions trips as well as young adults. You know, as a young adult, not just because I'm a pastor, I'm going to mission trip. No. Last week, I think you heard from the heart of Kenneth Cole as well. You know, how he keeps going, keeps going, and it, he refuted so many different reasons of why. You know, initially we all don't want to go. But you know what? Every one of us, we can make a difference. You wonder, what can I do as a student? I, I'm not like the pastor who can preach and can pray and heal the sick. No, like, it's not us that heals the sick. It's still the Lord that heals the sick. You get what I'm saying? We're also going with fear and trembling every time someone who is lame comes up to you like that. Pastor, pray for my healing. I was like, oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus. You know, the extra level of faith is required. But because it is still tapping on the one source of power, where does it come from? Where does the one source of power come from? From where? From where? Come on. From Jesus. We don't know the answer. From Jesus. You know, so really, don't, don't allow anything to hinder you, but just know that there is much to do. And He's looking at every one of us to be a part of this. Okay? Now you wonder, it's been 2,000 years since Jesus came. And we still have so much to do. Are we getting involved in an impossible task? Is this too great a job for us to do? Should Jesus just, should we just start saying, God, maybe we'll just sit down here, we'll just pray a lot, and we'll ask God to start appearing to them. Lord, why don't you go and visit with them? Like how you visited with Paul, if you can just, because you are omnipresent, right? You can be present at all, all, how many thousand people groups all at the same time? In an instant, all can be saved. Doesn't that make sense? It's like so logical, right? Why can't God do this, right? But in everything that He does, when He fights for us, He still works in and through us. We are so privileged because it is a privilege to be partnering with God. That's why so many of them say, we keep going back because we are so humbled. We get to see the power of God at work. You know, whether you are going in a foreign missions field or whether you are going, you know, actively sharing the gospel, even in your marketplaces, when you keep going like that, keep always sharing, going out, you will start seeing miracles happening. You will start seeing God at work. But it still takes us to do the going. Alright? But just to inspire us, i got a small, short little video clip. Do we have that? your assignment. Extra credit, it goes on all year long. Now, wait a minute. What? What? What's wrong with this? What's the matter? Yes? It's like so... So what? There must be a word to finish that sentence. Someone help her? Weird. Crazy. Weird. Crazy. Hard. Bummer. Bummer. Hard. How about possible. It's possible. The realm of possibility exists where? In each of you. Here. So you can do it. That's me. That's three people. And I'm going to help them. But it has to be something really big. 
something they can't do by themselves. So I do it for them. Then they do it for three other people. That's nine. And I do three more. That's 27, so I, I'm not really good at math, but it gets big really fast, you know? Articulation, please. Yes. I think it's a good idea. Sean? It's stupid. Adam? It's the honor system. People blow off the honor system. So what? Just because you do. <laughs> well, Trevor, the class seems to think that you've come up with an overly utopian idea. Look that word up in a minute. Like a perfect world? Mm-hmm. So? This comes from the movie Pay It Forward. Have you all seen the movie? If you haven't seen the movie, get a hold of it. It's actually a very, very, very powerful movie. And the story goes on about how this boy, he just came up with a very simple idea. Each one just touched three lives and they, instead of paying, repaying him for the kindness, he says pay it forward. It means you touch another three lives. And then, so it became a huge movement. All right. The word pay it forward was a term not, not from this movie. It actually originated much earlier. You know, it was reversing the order of payback. The payback system means like, you know, if I were to, to lend you some money, lend you, lend you 50 ringgit, then you come back and say, here, Pastor Sue, here's your 50 ringgit. I will say, no, pay it forward. Do something nice to someone else. Have you all encountered when you drive a car, right? Sometimes there'll be, there'll be like someone in front of you and they pay the toll for you. A total stranger. Have you all encountered that before? No, ah. I mean, only me. We so blessed, ah. Who are you? <laughs> you know, it was so cool. Nobody I knew, right? And then it was, I mean, it's just like one ringgit, ten cent or something like that. But it was so pleasant to, to come up there and then the lady just said, the toll booth said like, Oh, sudah baya, paid already. I said, by who? The one in front paid for you. Then he just waved. So I had my money ready, so I said, Okay, here, for the one behind me now. And I don't know how long it would have lasted, like, you know, but it was so exciting. It put a smile on my face. And I said, I also want to be a part of this, you know, this exciting thing that just can perk your day up. Isn't that amazing? And, you know, being a part of, of what we are doing in Glad Tidings is really an act of paying it forward. You know why? Who was the one that blessed us so much with? Jesus blessed us. He gave us salvation. He gave us so much. We can never, never... There's nothing we can ever do that can pay Him back. Can we ever pay back Jesus? Can you ever pay Jesus back for what He's done? There's nothing we can do. Even if you wanted to die on the cross for your own sins, it still would not pay back because we are an unworthy sacrifice. So really, the only way that, that we can really be a blessing to the Lord, the only way that we can honour, honour that gift of salvation, the love, or not out of duty, but because out of the love that He has given us, and we're so full of love, we want to bless Him back, but the Lord says, no, share my love with others. And that's all missions is about. You know, so today is not a, not a, a deep theological message that I have to share. It comes back to the basic. It comes back to what Jesus last said before He left. You know, I always remember that these last words, last words of somebody before they leave, very, very important. Very, very important. I can still remember until today the last words of my dad before he passed away. It's been 21 years already since my father has passed away. I can still hear it in my ear. I can still picture him there. And he just gave, he gave me a commission as well. See, when someone is going to be saying their last words to, to you, right? They're not going to be telling you things like, Sue, Make sure you sweep the floor every day. We're not going to be saying things like that. Whatever they last say is going to be something which is like the commission of your life. And it is my commission until today. Do you all want to know what it was? He just said, my dad just told me, take care of your mom and your sister. He knew my brother was okay. Because at the last, the last part of his life, he actually found the Lord after many, many years. 
but he, my sister was is still not yet with the Lord. And he just, he just knew that there is nothing unless she has Jesus. And of course, for mom, he just knew that I had to be the one to take care of. I'm the youngest, but he gave, I, I, I can't consider it a, a privilege that he gave me that commission. Sue, you take care of your mom. That's why my mom stays with me. That's why I try and do whatever I can for my mother. It is, besides loving her, it is also honouring the commission from my own father. And my own father did not die on the cross for me. Jesus died on the cross for me. How much greater is that commission for me, for you, for all of us? Amen? A father that gave his only begotten son just so we'll be included inside. Wow. So what were the last things that, that Jesus told his disciples? I'm sure we can all recite it just like that. From Matthew 28. Let's have the next one. Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19 and 20. Very familiar. But let's not be so familiar with Scripture that we can just flip through it, okay? We're just going to go through it very, 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 you know, quickly in a sense. But let's take it to heart. And Jesus, let's read it out together, okay? It's all there, right? We can all read it, okay? One, two. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Come, let's everybody read it. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We're just going to go a little bit deeper into really the message, that last message he left. He did not just leave the message for the 12 disciples or even the, 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 the hundreds that he, he left behind. The message is for you and me. Every one of us. Everyone that says, I'm a believer, this is for all of us. The first one it talks about is the authority in verse 18. All authority. The word authority is the key word here. All authority comes, it's a power word. It comes from the word exosia. Exosia means the privilege, the force, the capacity, competency. You know, delegated influence of complete authority. It means he's got the ultimate authority. No one can have more authority than Jesus. You get what I'm saying? Ultimate authority. Ultimate power. Ultimate strength. All that has been given to Jesus by the Father. That's why he could tell everybody, I come with all authority. So when he comes with all authority, whatever he says, nobody, nobody can supersede it. Nobody can say, oh, there was a mistake made. Jesus didn't mean to say that. He misspoke. You know how, how it is when politicians misspeak and then they will have, you know, a press conference and they say, no, 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 actually we didn't really mean that. Normally they do that when the poll ratings go down. Jesus doesn't need to bother about poll ratings because he has all authority. Amen? He's got all authority. So he has all authority. This word is infallible, unchanging, all authority. Okay? And the authority has been given to him by the Father. We, we know that in Philippians 2, right, when Jesus came, he took on a very humble form. He's God, powerful, almighty, creator. And takes the form of a human being. You know? You know, our bodies cannot do so much. You know, our bodies get tired. You know? All kinds of things. But he put aside. He put aside all these things to take on a human form. To really, really, he didn't have to. But because of love, he did. And that, that's what the scripture says here. He humbled himself, becoming obedient, even to the point of death, even death on the cross. And we all know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed and he prayed, his prayer was so intense, his sweat was like blood. Father, if this cup can be taken from me, but not my will, but yours be done. He was the first missionary sent to save the world. Hallelujah. Therefore, because of that, God exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So the authority was given, not that he proclaimed it himself, but the Father bestowed it upon him. 
He has authority over the universe. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth. He created everything, visible and invisible. Thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created for Him and through Him. This verse, right, I use it a lot when, when I go to missions, missions field. You know why? Okay, when you go to missions field, right, it's not like your house like you're staying at. And you know, I tell you secret, y'all don't use it against me, right? Okay? My secret is, I'm terrified of cockroaches. Anybody here with me? <laughs> you know, for me, it's like, I see a cockroach, right? It's like, I can see from down there, I get paralyzed. I'm just like, okay, I'm keeping an eye on it. I will just like, okay, stay clear that that's your territory and I'll be on my territory. And if I need to go to the toilet, I can just hold it. I will just hold it, you know, like no way, you know. And then so, I was like, yo, Lord, how can I go to missions feel like this? And some more nowadays, I'm like, team leader, you know. Team leader is supposed to have the answers for everything, you know. And supposed to be able to like, you know, save the day, you know. Like, ta-da, you know, like, oh, cockroach, come. Team leader will come and save you, pop. So I'm like, oh, Jesus, how? But you know, God is so, God is so, so... So, so cute like, in that sense. Like, you know, he's so, so mindful of, of my little problems, you know. So what he, what, every trip I go to, right, if I do encounter a cockroach, right, there is always uh, some heroin on my team, you know. There is always some super, superhuman person, you know. I consider them superhuman, you know. You can just like, like some people are quite amazing, you know. They can just take the tissue. Don't worry, I got it. Pop! I'm like, wow, with the hand. I just, then I'm just like, like want to see? No, it's okay. You just get rid of it. Oh, so far, far away. And God always, you know, provides, you know, people like that to help me out, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I get worried, you know, like, Lord, it's not the most comfortable place to go, you know, and all these creepy crawlers, crawlies. And for me, right, the mere thought of, sometimes I can have, see a cockroach in the bathroom and then, okay, I will just slowly come out. Then I'll close the door lah, and I won't tell anybody because I'm scared. Scared to tell people that there's a cockroach there because then they'll say, oh, then you better go and kill it. I'm like, oh, then I have to reveal my weaknesses, you know. And then so then when I go to sleep, huh, my eye will be on the, on the bathroom door. Seriously, I'm, I'm, then I'll be so paranoid. When I say, I'm like, oh, what's this? Oh, no, nothing. Then I'm like, oh, I will start feeling things all over my body. Like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's my hair. Oh, the fan blowing. Oh, okay. I will just imagine the cockroach is fly. That's how terrible I am, you know. So you know what? If you are scared of all these funny things, you know what? God is so good to us. God is always so mindful of us. You know, He really takes care of us through it all. You know, He's really so always said, God, you, you are above all this, you know. So Lord, you've given me that, that kind of authority above all these things. So Lord, you just, I don't want to kill anything because I cannot handle it. No, but just don't make it come, you know. Don't make it come, okay? And God is, small things or so like that, He can take care of us. I think God is so, so wonderful. Yeah, when we go despite our fears, Despite whatever it is, He always looks out for us. So if ever there's any fear, please put it aside. Trust me, there's always going to be somebody who's going to be there watching out for every one of us. Okay? There's some things which you are probably not scared of. Like, I discovered I was not very scared of um, lizards. So when someone's very terrified, I said, oh, just shoot it away. Like, what's the problem? Oh, is it? Oh, problem. Oh. So then I find, wow, I can be the hero now. I am the lizard queen. You know, but, you know, it was just very, very simple, you know. But we all a team. God always brings us together with such an amazing experiences in every mission trip. It's so fun, you know. And then we all laugh about it. Then later on, at the end of the day, I will say, actually, I do want to go there because got cockroach. But thank you so much for killing it for me. You know, I feel so safe right now. Now I can sleep without you know, imagining strange things happening to me. Alright? And okay, the next one is authority to assure deliverance. He healed many who were sick, various diseases, cast out many demons, and he would not permit demons to speak because they knew him. See, the same authority that Jesus had when he walked on earth to cast out demons, to heal the sick. And this when people say, oh, okay, this one, pastor, this one I cannot handle. This one, oh, I go mission trip, oh, I don't want to go mission trip because... You know, I always hear everybody says, tell me, all oh, the crowds are coming, crowds are coming. And then like, oh, I have to pray for them. I cannot do that, Pastor. Here also, I don't pray for people. What more to go there? But you know, I was also like that. I think every one of us who have been on a mission trip all have the same anxiety attack. You'll be like, oh no, the blind one, send to Pastor Julie. Send to Pastor Julie, you know, like, oh, the lame one, ah, Pastor Vincent, here, here. Ah, Pastor Vincent, you pray, you know. But you know, God is very, very interesting in that way what you fear the most, right, will always come to you because He wants to challenge your faith. And you know, many years ago, that was how I first got boldness because really I had the blind coming to me. 
And I was like, it was my second trip to Sri Lanka. The first trip was a recce, so we didn't really have meetings. The second trip was when, you know, Kenneth was with us. He said, remember the A-team? We talked about the A-team last week, how there was Pastor Vincent and there was Pastor Julie. He called me the A-team. Actually, no, la, I was just there to take, to take notes, be described, you know, make sure got, got, everybody got breakfast. You know, I was that sort of uh, capacity, you know. And so, but there was a meeting. Pastor Vincent preached an amazing faith-building, healing service because it was a healing rally. They, in fact, we didn't realize this. They had printed big posters. They do this in Sri Lanka. I think India, so they do that. Big, huge posters. Pastor's, Pastor Vincent's picture, very big. And then the whole map of Sri Lanka is on fire. And then, don't know what they're saying. So I just told the guy, I said, Pastor, you better bring the fire. You know? <laughs> so he was saying, oh my goodness, have to pray like mad. And so we prayed. As a team, all we did was, we just came to, to the room before the meeting. About two hours, we just prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing else to do. Pray and pray and pray. Because we don't know what to expect. It was our first meeting in Sri Lanka. And then Samo, this blind lady came to me, lah. Hi, yo. I was just, I was trying, but because there was really a lot of people, and Pastor Judy was already having her own kind of crowd going on. Pastor Vincent, everybody had their own crowd, like You know, Kenneth also, as he shared last week, he had his own crowd also to deal with. So there was no, no salvation from anywhere except Jesus Christ, lah, okay? So that's why we have to, when the blind woman came, there was another assistant, I mean, uh, assistant pastor that was always be there to interpret and stuff like that. And so he said, oh, she's here because she's blind. Then I'm like, I'm not blind. I can see that she's blind. I was to tell him that, but I didn't. Lie. So I said, oh, okay, let's, I was trying to be holy. Oh, okay, let's pray. But in my mind, I'm like, I prayed the longest Genesis to Revelation prayer I could think of. Okay, just pray and pray and pray. After a while, I'm thinking like, okay, I think I need to stop because no service is going to be over soon, you know. And then I opened my eyes. Then I was so tempted because there was a lot of people I was so tempted. Okay, la, next. Let's keep on praying. La. You know, finish reading. Ma. I just continue praying. But then the Lord said, check. I'm like, oh, Jesus. What are you doing to me? <sighs> so then I, I asked her. I asked the interpreter, um, how is she now after the prayer? I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> wondering what else is there. And then the interpreter looks at me, talks to her. You know, all this is going on. Then I'm just wondering, no? Then he says, oh, she can see now. He just tell me, oh, she can see now. I said, are you sure she was blind? <laughs> I'm the one now that needed the faith. Like, I said, are you sure she was blind? Ask her again. Was she really blind? And then he said, no, no, I know her. She's from our church. She's blind. I said, oh. Then I, then I remember, you know, when we go for all these healing meetings, right? What do they do normally? Can you see how many fingers? <laughs> so I, saw, I thought I'll do that also. La. So I said, okay, okay. You ask her, okay? I show her how many fingers. Then I go a bit further. How many fingers? Oh, so she answered correctly. La. So then, thank, thankfully, the Sri Lankan pastor who was over, overall the, in charge of the whole church program, he saw me doing some strange stunts, like this, and all these strange fingers that like he thought, okay, something is going on. So he called her up and he verified that really the Lord. And then, I mean, I don't know about her faith, like, but my faith level increased so much. Like. After, that, it was, that, after that, you know what happened? One, one, one blind was healed, guess what? All the other blind people, very fast, come, come. <laughs> I just said, Jesus. But the healing comes from the Lord, Amen. Our job is just to pray. Our job is just to lay hands. The healing comes from the Lord. But then the next day, because it was a few, day, few nights of, of rally, the next day, because I can recognize her, of course, you know, you recognize a woman that, that just got healed from being blind, right? So I can remember her face until today. I can remember her face. So I was another corner praying. Then I saw her again out for prayer. So I was like, hmm, maybe she wasn't really blind. Maybe she was planted there. So I was watching her while I was praying, uh, praying, praying. Now I'll keep an eye on her. And you know what she was doing? Because, you know, the altar there, they have a lot of flowers. There are a lot of, like, like flowers here, you know. And she was going around, touching the flowers and touching. The, she was just, all she was doing, just walking and touching. Now I was wondering, what is she doing? You know, but I was too far away to, to figure it out because like, there's a crowds as well. Then the pastor, who's also a very wise man, again saw her, spoke to her, and he got her on stage. He goes, you know what? The first day, she was granted sight without colour. On the second day, she could see colour. She could see colour. Come on, give God the glory. That was why she was looking from flower to flower. I was just like, wow, God. He's no respecter of man. He can just, he can just do it. You know? And that's, 
that power. And you know what? It can happen to anyone. It can happen to anyone because God wants to move. God wants to really, all the, the 5,000 over, 7,000 over people groups, He wants to meet with the people. But He needs available vessels like you and I. Hands that He can just pull His power through. Prayers that He can use us to do. Every one of us, we can be a part. Hallelujah. Come, let's go on. Very exciting, right? Wow. Going on missions uh, is like really, you know, a faith adventure with the Lord. The second one, in verse 19 now, the Messiah's command. Go. Go means what? Go. Exactly. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the? Of the? And of the? And of the? Okay. Go therefore and, and do all these things. Now when this commission was first given, to that first generation, they could not achieve it in their lifetime. Lifetime, Because obviously they were just the new Christians. Only a small segment, right? Therefore, the commission, it has to extend to the generations of believers down the line. And now, we are the current generation. We are actually the end time generation. We are the end time generation of believers. And you know what? God has only us to work in and through. He only has the church of today. Not just glad tidings, I'm talking about the whole church, not the whole world is depending on glad tidings, no. But I'm talking about all of us, not just while you're here in glad tidings. International students, when you are released back home, you still carry the Great Commission with you. Whether you're, going to, you're getting ready to go overseas, you still carry that commission to go and share the gospel. Whether you're, you're going to go to Australia, there are still unreached people in Australia. Really, trust me. There are a lot of people who don't know the gospel. So we're all called to go. Yeah? So we're all charged with the same words, go and make disciples of all nations. Tell your neighbor that. Look into his eye, look into her eyes. Not romantically, but just tell them. Jesus said, go and make disciples. Come on, tell them. Go. Tell your friends. Don't tell me. I'm, I'm going already. That's right. Go and make disciples. The make disciples comes from the word matetio. Okay, it's, it's just a Greek word. It just means to become a pupil, to disciple, and to teach. It, it comes, the word is a very strong directive. You know? And we are called to do that. You're wondering, I can't teach people. It's amazing, you know, because when, when, when I told Frida, I will share this, you know, <laughs> when Frida first joined me, because, okay, normally first timers, I will not, I will not put, them what, put them through what I went through. I won't make them immediately share a sermon, okay? Because I had many heart attacks that day with Brother Frida. So I, I normally said, Nama, you share a testimony, and why don't you try and take on children's ministry? You know, so then I'll bring her through, and she said, I don't know, I don't talk to children one. I, I said, but you have a son. He's different. I said, okay. And then, so okay, we sit down together, then we'll do children's ministry together. And then, her last one, five minutes finished already. <laughs> you know, then I said, finish already? Yeah, I finished. I said, wow, we have to be the same time as the adults preaching one. Oh, what do I do now? And then, so we, we, we had to go through it. And so, in, in the beginning, you know, it was quite a challenge. But now, after three or four trips, I can't remember already. Now, she can say, no worries. No worries, Pastor Sue, I'll just handle it. I'm like, wow. She'll just take her things, take her children. She will just know what games to play. She'll just like, I said, well, you're a professional children's church, children's teacher now. She said, well, you just got to do what you got to do, you know. You just learn what you got to learn and you just got to just go forth, you know, and just enjoy yourself while you're doing it. And I was just amazed by her. And there's so many other stories, people who are not trained in that sense, but because they love the, the people. Just a heart for the people and she just, just does it, you know. No more stress. In fact, I said, do you want me to go and, and partner with you? No, it's okay. You, you handle the main church side. I'll be, I'll be fine. Oh, okay. And she's really, and she can even con com communicate. I don't know how, like, no sign language, all with the helpers there. But it's amazing. You know how God can use really anyone, any one of us. So, the first one is go make disciples. Baptizing them talks about marking them, go mark disciples, meaning that we mark them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We mark them as a disciple by the act of baptizing them. You know, uh, when I was in Bible school, 
I was privileged enough to sign up for a missions um, practicum, right? Yeah, Pastor Gwen and, and, and Pastor Tiff also took it when they were also in Bible school. So, uh, I chose the country, the Lord laid in my heart, the country of Myanmar. I had never been there before. Okay, there's a whole long story about that. Okay, when I went there, I didn't realize that they have no internet, they have no hand, no handphone signals, nothing. I was totally not able to communicate. I have to like steal away to the internet cafe while the pastors are not looking because they're very concerned about my safety. So, but I'll wave to them, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Then as soon as they turn on the corner, internet cafe, and then we had we could only communicate in, we couldn't really write in in English because the emails were scrutinized back then. You know, in Myanmar is a very is the, the regime. So. My Bahasa had to become very good. So I'll write to Pastor Karen, to Pastor Gwen, all in Bahasa, you know. Try not trying to, to, to be so like, I felt like very excited, like, wow, like so secret service like that, you know. But yeah, it wasn't secret service. But one of the exciting things is in certain regions where really they are not able to practice openly. It's a Buddhist country, but they're very strict about, about um, Christians practicing. So what they do to baptize people, they don't go and do a big, big baptism in a river because People can catch them, right? So you know what they do or not? Especially when there's no river nearby. You know those oil barrels? Those oil barrels? So obviously they're empty. There's no oil inside. So they will fill it up with water. And the person being baptized will go inside the oil barrel. And then the pastor will go outside. I like this one because the pastor doesn't get wet. So <laughs> the pastor is on the outside. And then the pastor will go, okay, in the name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Then the, the one on the inside will just go down. They just go down, ah, and then they will be submerged by water. And then they come out. Then if the police come, quickly just roll him out and empty the tong. And then turn it over, and then, ta-da, we're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, one of us is wet, but it's okay. <laughs> but really, that is what was going on in the Wat region. That was what's going on. So I said, wow, God, when your gospel has to be shared, Christians get so innovative. Isn't that amazing? You know, because really, the call is to go and baptize them. You and I may not be a part of the baptizing, you know. But you know what? When we are giving to the churches, when we are blessing the pastors to be able to plant and go into the interiors, this is the result. Disciples are being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come on, give God the glory. Hallelujah. It's amazing. We don't see it all the time when we go there. But we hear and we see the photos. It's real. Hallelujah. The work of God is on the move. The harvest is ready. It's so ready. But not enough people. Really not enough people. Because, you know, every country has got so many unreached groups, right? If every trip only three or four people go, we can only go one place at a time. But if we have groups of like, let's say, 10 people, we can even divide ourselves into two or even three groups, head to three different areas. Can you imagine we'll be three times, eight, three times more effective in reaching out, three times more places? Isn't that amazing? We need the people. That's why we say, come. As you pray, as you give, let's also go together. Huh? Let's do that, okay? Think about it. Pray about it. The answer is sure, yes one. God won't say no, I believe. <laughs> after make disciples, after mark disciples, go and mature the disciples, teaching them to obey everything. Teaching them. We do a lot of classes when, when, we, are, when we are in the mission field. Pastor Linda does a lot of uh, cell leader training because cell is a very effective tool, especially in Vietnam because they can't have big, big churches. So they have a lot of very effective small group meeting all over the place. So you all are doing the gel, the gear up, guess what? So are they. And they're doing it very well as well. They're also reaching out. They're also being a blessing and they're training and making other disciples through this, all in their secret little rooms where the, the communist police cannot come and find them. You see, at the end of the day, when we want to go for missions, the only motive that matters is just love. That's all that's required. Just love, loving the Lord and saying, God, because you first loved, you first loved me when I didn't do anything, when I didn't deserve anything, I want to pay it forward. That's why, that's why we continue to do it. The Messiah's commitment, verse 20, Behold, I am with you always, 
to the end of the age. What's the football team that says this? Y-N-W-A. Is there a fan in the house? <laughs> You'll never walk alone. That's what Liverpool fans say, right? <laughs> but they're not original. Jesus said it first. Okay? <laughs> Let's get it on record. Jesus said it first. You'll never walk alone because really, He says, I am with you. Behold. The word behold here is see, see, see and know. I am with you. That's why He can take care of my cockroaches, you see. Hallelujah. He can take care of everything, every encounter, every difficulty. He's got it. He's got it. It is always a challenge sometimes, you know. Uh, I, I, I go through a lot of interesting challenges. Like, I thought I'd go missions, sir. Got, got. I had a lot of, because of my, of my skin situation. In 2010, I came back. Two weeks, I, I had to be like wrapped up like a mummy because I had a lot of like infection. So the doctor had to come and like poke, poke, poke the pus one by one. Poke, 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 poke. Press, 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 press. Wrap me up. Then the first one was probably a week, la, not two weeks. La. Then the following year, same thing happened again. So then someone actually told me, maybe Pastor Sue, this country not for you. La. You always have a problem when you come back. So I was like, no, even more. I'm going to go. You know, I said, God, you've got to help me. Then 2012, no problem. So I was like, ha, I got that beat. Then 2013 came in and had a very bad, very, very bad infection. There were lesions. There were, it, I couldn't even walk. You know, in fact, it was so bad that from the, from the airport, you know, immediately came to the, to the clinic to immediately get it, get it settled. And that also began to open door for so many other things. And 2014 was a very sad year. You know why? I couldn't go missions this year because of health. And it broke my... Until today, I just feel like, oh Lord, this is... Something is missing because you form such a bond with the people there. They are not just pastors. They are your family. They are friends. They are people that... that and they're so concerned about me. They text me. They, 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 they email me. And I email them. And, you know, we walk through life together. You know? Then I just told the Lord... I've been, I'm praying even from now. I started praying from last month when I, when I came back to office. I said, Lord, I'm going for missions next year. 2015, I'm going to be okay. 2015, nothing's going to stop me. Come on, let's give God the glory. You know, no matter what health issues that you have, you begin to commit it to the Lord. You can say, Lord, I want to go. I want to be a part of the end time harvest workers. I want to do this. I don't want anything to stand in my way, Lord. I purpose. And I pray. And I really want to make it happen. You know, Lord, help me. It's just as simple as that. I'm, I'm trusting the Lord, okay? And I know for sure, next year I will come and say, hey, come on, guys. I'm going on a trip. Come and join me. For sure. Mark my words, okay? I will come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll all come. You know, this, this verse says, behold, come and see. And it says, I am with you. Remember the word I am? I am. When did we first hear the I am, that I am? It was in Exodus. When God told Moses, when Moses said, who? Who do I tell the people sent me? Who do I tell the people? Who's this God that sent me? What's your name? And he answered, I am who I am. He said, say this, say, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. The I am is still sending now. The I am sent Moses to deliver the Israelites, the I am needs to send you and I as tools of deliverance to the people around us. Amen. The Great Commission, or is it the Great Omission? It's something for all of us. You know, we, we, we need to really understand it is a commission for all of us. You know, a commission basically means it is an instruction. It is a command. It is a very clear call, a call to serve, a call to, it's a command from the Lord. There's no two ways about it, and it's for everyone. But for some of us, it has become the great omission, meaning that it is the one thing that we say we can put aside. It's got nothing to do with me. You know, the Great Commission is not just about cross-cultural sharing the gospel. Let's be, let's be very clear. 
I'm not saying that cross-cultural sharing of the uh, cross-cultural mission trips are better than local or better than, than, than winning souls in your marketplaces. No, it is all part of the commission. Where you are, we need to get it inside our DNA. Really inside our DNA, where we are planted, we need to start going. We need to start filling these places here with pre-believers. We need to start filling, giving pre-believers an opportunity to hear the gospel at least once. Because we've been hearing it too many times on our own. We need to get busy in the kingdom. We are living in the last days. We don't want to be hearing of friends. It was very sad when you hear about the MH370, the MH17, just like that. You know, some of us, you may have known one or two people. You may have known different ones on board. It's senseless and it's very sad if they died without the Lord. Let's not wait for things like that to happen. But let's really say, Lord, while it's still day, use me. While it's still day, you know, empower me as well. Because really, we need the funds. We need to send money to support the work there. They depend on us. Because really, if you think cost of living is increasing in Malaysia, it's crazy over in those countries. Sometimes I, I look upon the, the things that they have to buy. I'm like, what? Y'all spend so much money on, on basic necessities because some of their, their governments are very corrupt or, or, or bribery or they're just very poor nations. So therefore, to empower the pastors to really do the work which we cannot do at times, we need to bless them financially. We need to help them so that they are really empowered to go and plant. It's expensive. Petrol money is all very expensive. Even their diesel cost is even more expensive than our petrol pricing here because they don't get subsidies, you see. They're not... Uh, oil, oil rich nations. So things are very, very expensive. Pray, give, go. We always hear that. Pray, give, go. But sometimes we can get a little bit confused. We think it's pray or give or go. But I want to just encourage all of us. Let's do all today. Because really the commission is go. It is also to give. It is also to pray. We have to keep praying for the teams that go. We have to keep praying for our partners in the land. A lot of persecution is going on. Really, they need our encouragement and prayers. And we really need to, to stand along with them as we give. And when, when the year comes, when 2015 draws, draws near, besides listing down all the long public weekends, long holiday weekends where you can, you know, book a holiday, which is fine. Go and enjoy yourself, you know. Have a good time with your family. But I want to encourage you. Set aside some time. Let's go for a mission trip together. Let's really, really say, God, God, let's populate heaven. Let's make this mission trip a time to populate heaven. Gather your cell members around. You know, you're so scared to go alone. You, I don't want to go alone. You know, you don't want to go with another, another friend. Challenge your cell members. Let's do this together. You know, let, let's adopt a nation. Let's, let's adopt a trip. Let's, if not everybody in the, the cell can go, maybe two or three can go. The rest will be like praying along and, and supporting along. We can all play a part, yeah? I, th I think that's really great if we can all do something like that. There were just some quotations from, from three men. I just want <clears throat> to end with this. The musicians can take the position. If a commission by an earthly king is considered an honour, how can a commission by a heavenly king be considered a sacrifice? If an earthly king were to come to you, the agong, but to come to you and give you an instruction, a commission to do something, you will take it as an honour. Wow, the Agong taught me worthy. The king of my land, the president of my land. But now the king of all kings is giving us a commission today. In fact, he gave it 2,000 years ago and it's still relevant today. It is not a sacrifice. It is an honour to be partnering with the king of kings. Amen. That was by, do you know who's that guy there? African brothers and sisters, that's David Livingston, a missionary to Africa back in the day. Hallelujah. We thank God for, for men like him, right, who brought the gospel to the, to, to the beginning part of Africa and many more followed after him. The next one is not doing the commission of our Lord still binding on us. Can we not do more than we are doing now? This was William Carey. They call him the father of modern missions. 
William Carey was very instrumental in the work in India. You know, he began a lot of things in India. Then the last one. If I had 1,000 lives, I would give it all for China. Who was a missionary that had a huge heart for China? Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor. You know, I just have one story from Hudson Taylor, which really I was just sharing to Pastor Gwen just now. That Because Hudson Taylor was very active in, they call it a China mission. And um, so he would recruit a lot of workers that want to go and, and, you know, be a missionary in China. And so, so he was seeing one, one after the other and he was say, okay, yeah, you're good to go. Okay, go and see this person, you're good to go. And then came before him one man. And we just stopped him in his tracks. He just Hudson Taylor looked at him. Yes, why are you here? I'm here to sign up. Hudson Taylor was puzzled. What can you do in the mission field? Do you know why Hudson Taylor asked that question? Because the man that came before him only had one leg. Only had one leg. So Hudson Taylor said, what can you do in the mission field? And this man said, he said, why do you want to go all the way to China? He said, because the ones with two legs are not going. It's real. I'm just so touched and I, you know, we see some of them who are availing themselves, right, to go. And when you know some of their stories, we're just like, wow, amazed. There's a lot of stories and sacrifices that go behind. And God always meets them, meets every one of us. And you know, giving is always a sacrifice. Because it's always, in a sense, denying ourselves of certain other things that we want. So that we say, Lord, I'm setting aside this money. I'm setting aside my time. I'm setting aside my treasure. Because God, I know when I place it in your hands, you're going to multiply it a hundred times over to see souls saved. Because that's what it's all about. That is all our commission. You know, today. So today, we sang that song which had this, this Bible verse in it. In His name, the nations will put their hope in. In His name. When we hear of wars and rumours of wars, we hear of earthquakes, maybe tsunamis, whatever it may be. We may be powerless to do a lot of things. But when we bring the gospel there, we bring hope. We bring hope afresh. And that's all He asks us to do. Be His hands, be His feet, be His channels of blessing, even as you give unto the Lord. So we're just going to take some time just to, you know, just to pray and, and if you have not given to missions, I really want to appeal to you from the land, of all the lands of the 12, 13 countries. Appeal for the people. Let's give to the Lord. Let's give to missions. You know, let, let's just close our eyes, just begin to... And if the Lord is speaking to you that, yes, it's time to go this year. It's time to go next year. It's time to, you know, come out a bit of the comfort, our comfort zone, put aside fears and really let's trust the Lord. You know, I'm not going to do an altar call but it's just between you and the Lord right now. But if anyone here, you just want to, you just say, yeah, I think I need that pledge card. I think I, I would like to be a part of it. Just put up your hands. I think ushers are ready to, to just quickly hand it out. I just don't want to leave anybody out. Just just lift up your hand to the ushers, not to me. But the rest of us, let's just, I think the majority is already given unto the Lord. Begin to ask the Lord, God, Really, what's my role in this? What's my role? Whether I'm a student, a foreign student, whether I, I'm a young adult, whether I'm a senior, whether I'm a mother with, with two small children, what can I do? Begin to ask the Lord. For those who took the cards earlier, I just want to encourage you at this time, just begin to write your name down. Yeah, I still see hands going up, you know, asking for cards and everything. You know, just, just take your time, write your names. And the pledge is such where you can either choose to, to do a, a one-time pledge. Then you tick the box which says a one-time pledge and you write in that amount. No one is going no to hound you. No one's going to call you. No one's gonna, it's between you and the Lord only. No one's going to remind you. 
Sometimes we ask for the phone number more because if we don't understand your writing. But if you want to also leave it blank between you and the Lord, that's also fine. You can also choose to say, I can give monthly a small token every month. And then you just tick the monthly and then you tick the amount that you would like to give every month. Whatever it may be. I just want to invite Pastor Linda to just come, just to pray. Pray over all of us. You know, maybe at this time we can all just stand to our feet. Those who are still writing, you can write and then you can stand when you're done. But for the rest of us,